hello guys okay so uh, this is my first video and uh, I don't suppose it would look uh, very professionally made but I'll get better okay so uh, this uh, video is primarily about how to properly plan your unity game uh, it is uh, uh, I would say that I felt the need to make this video because most of the unity tutorials uh, present on youtube would uh, often take the route which is easy and fast and quick because uh, i feel that their primary purpose is to appeal to new unity developers and to make them feel that it's very easy to make games which is uh, true but that doesn't mean that uh, once you have reached a point in your career where you can uh, properly plan your game uh, and uh, you know it would help you uh, make uh, more professional games and uh, especially games which have a bigger scope so let me quickly go through why I'm making this video and uh, don't worry this video isn't fully about or uh, fully uh, uh, in slides I would be showing you uh, the tool I recommend how to plan your game okay so most uh, the point number one I've already explained the point number two is basically if you're making small games uh, primarily mobile games or dare I say clones and uh, or following tutorials then uh, you can make do without planning but uh, if you really want to make a game which is unique and you know one of those games which you always wanted to make then if you don't plan beforehand you're gonna have a lot uh, uh, you're gonna have trouble you know taking it to completion so that's why if you want to make games which have more substance in them or which have more depth then planning is uh, going to help you I would say immensely okay the last point is uh, pretty obvious uh, because once you have a plan then you can basically subdivide it into tasks and it helps you see uh, your progress which is uh, one of the best ways to keep you motivated and actually manage to complete a game okay so I'm going to basically recommend two ways to plan your game this is entirely focused uh, and aimed towards indie uh, developers especially hobbyists and or really small teams because when you're in a larger team there's no other way uh, but to plan uh, your project but uh, for a smaller teams and for hobbyists they usually they don't usually have uh, a lot of resources or uh, how how would I put it like a proper guidance or a proper approach mm, you know they can learn uh, to plan their projects so basically they just dive in and uh, most of the time they tend to lose motivation or the project ends up with a lot of code rot code rot is basically your 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 programming and your code starts to get more and more buggy and by the it um, by the end or after after a while your code is basically spaghetti okay so I'm gonna recommend two ways one is you can basically plan your project by the project structure in unity terms it would be the scripts you will be making and how they will basically mm, fit into your overall structure and the second approach is by game design okay uh, I should mention as I've already already written in the presentation as well that uh, if you use the first method I recommend that does not mean you should not have a game design document or a game design you should always have a game design but by planning and by using the first method you will be planning your project uh, structure uh, and you'll see in a, in a bit okay and by game design you'll basically be putting and visualizing your game design and that would help you mm, check mark things which are part of the game design okay so the tool I'm going to use is uh, coggle.it it's basically a domain name you can mm, go to your browser and write coggle.it it's 
kind of a mind mapping tool which uh, in a minute you will see that is a really good way to plan your project so let's start okay so for our example we're going to be making a game and let's imagine it's a top-down twin stick shooter if you don't know what twin stick shooters are um, in our example we're going to say that you will basically be using the up down left right or w a s d keys to move your character and you can basically use your mouse to aim and shoot and you'll be looking at him from the top and uh, and let's say we'll have enemies which are aliens and we'll have guns okay so first of all by project structure okay so we will uh plan our project by project structure so let's go to the website and let me quickly go back and exit this and we're in coggle.it and we click create diagram you just have to go to that website make an account it's free to use click create diagram okay so now we are going to plan our project by structure of the project we're gonna have in unity so what i like to usually do is write the game's name here so let's say top down shooter and then i make four branches number one is enums enums number two is game objects the other one is managers and then data objects okay so this is something i came up with so I, I i'm not saying this is the hard and fast rule but this tends to help certain projects okay so by enums that basically you i assume that you have some basic understanding of coding i might make more videos uh, going into depth about these topics but enums are basically enumerations or let's say if you have let's say two types of guns or three types of guns so you would basically make an enum called gun type so and then you can say i'm gonna have rifles then i'm gonna have smgs and then i'm gonna have pistols these are the three types of guns our game will have okay and if you notice i'm not following a particular pattern that's the whole point of it you just pour your idea into this diagram and then this diagram is going to help you keep uh, and stay on track then okay let's say i will have an input manager okay so i plan to be uh, doing clean coding and object oriented coding with the uh, loose coupling so i would like to have an input manager well, it should be manager then obviously let's say uh, we will we are going to need a sound manager and we might also need an event manager okay so if you if you haven't used some of these things this is uh, just me planning a project and you might feel the need for different things or some of these things might not be needed by you but i would recommend uh, not to couple your code too much a lot of unity tutorials usually do not uh, emphasize good coding practices and they end up with spaghetti code which is annoying for bigger and medium scale projects okay so let's say we are also hmm, game objects okay game objects represents all the things which are basically going to be existing in your scene or actual uh, playable object game objects in unity terms is the objects which have transforms in them so basically they can exist in a 3d world so for our project we are obviously gonna have our soldier okay so let's say we will have game object soldier and then a good question arises aliens okay so technically aliens and soldiers uh, both are going to be running around so aliens are going to be trying to you know let's say the aliens don't have guns so the aliens will be uh, going to you know chasing your soldier and our soldier would actually be 
you know using the input from our input manager so we right click and then we use this uh, branching thing and we put it to the soldier okay so now we this is kind of a visual representation helping us that the input manager would actually be controlling our soldier game object so this is all about visualizing your project so there are no hard and fast rules but uh, putting it in a viewable format always helps so now we have an alien okay so let's say we shoot bullets and uh, we have you know guns okay now we we can do it two ways either we can have data objects which are basically gun and it's basically a class which has information regarding a particular gun so it could be let's say a rifle could have slower rate of fire so that would be an you know a float inside that gun class and a soldier could have an instance of that gun class okay so we could do it that way or if we wanted we could have a child object of the soldier game object and it could be the gun and then that gun could that object could have a script attached to it and then that would be a game object way of handling guns because then that that gun script would be uh, a mono behavior so by uh, data objects I basically mean scripts which won't be mono behaviors okay so now let's say for e we are you know doing the game object way of handling guns okay so let's delete this um, I right clicked on it to get that menu okay so I have a gun game object which is basically a child of soldier but this doesn't make sense why because in this hierarchy we are not representing children we are representing individual game objects it might be a child gun might be a child of soldier in the hierarchy of unity but it's a separate game object so we right click we use this transplant branch and we put it here now we have these three distinct type of game objects in our game okay so now let's move forward and we could say that each gun is gonna have a certain type so each gun script will have an instance or instance uh, uh, field for uh, a gun type so a gun game object will have a script called gun on it and this is what it represents so basically these are also the names of the scripts and that gun script would know what type of gun it is okay so we could oh not transplant we could make a link from here to here so we know that the gun would know what type of gun it is okay so now we could say we have aliens so aliens are basically also moving around our uh, map let's say or level so the aliens do aliens have types okay let's say aliens also have types alien type so aliens can also have types and we could say aliens have three types uh, let's say runner and then say let's say exploder he explodes when he hits you and then let's say hmm shooter we plan not to have a shooter but let's let's say we do okay and let's drag it here okay so now uh what else we have guns we have aliens we have input manager input manager sound manager we are probably going to have a main menu so let's say we have a main menu manager there are many ways to do it you could also have a user interface manager or a user interfacer and if i make more videos and if you like how i explain things then i could teach you how to do those things but let's say we have a main menu manager this would be a script which would uh, be in the main menu okay 
Another thing to explain is that this input manager is also a game object, but it, this is of a manager category. So that's why it's separate. You could always do this if it makes more sense to you. So game object, manager type game objects. So, and then there would be an empty game object with the script called input manager on it, which will be catching input and commanding our soldier to do certain things. And then data objects, we didn't use any, but uh, let's say we could have a data object called sounds, or let's say gun sounds, which would hold references to our sounds, for example, and our sound manager could interface with it okay so then we could have uh, in fact this I plan this project to be a really small one to give you basic understanding of how you can approach this project structure based approach to planning your project so once you have this thing you know what scripts to make now for example you know that you're gonna have an alien type enum script you're gonna have uh, a, this should be alien okay so you're gonna have an alien script basically or an enemy script you could call it enemy enemy and then you're gonna have a gun script ca called gun then uh, it would be child of soldier and obviously if a certain input comes which wants the soldier to shoot its gun the gun would be a child of the soldier and that it would receive that input and shoot it so let's make a link there as well so that's how things work you could even add more and more detail to it this diagram could evolve as you uh, work or it but I would recommend starting from a good um, starting point with enough detail which helps you uh, start uh, from a point where there are less and less Im you know ambiguities okay so once we have this, we, we're going to have a gun script, a soldier script, input manager, sound manager, event manager, main menu manager. Let's suppose these are the things. So I didn't handle user interface. You could also, you know, user interface is handled um, technically as a game object by Unity. So you could do it here or you could do it from the main uh, center point for separate user interface. You know, you could have. Uh, main menu here and then you know that uh, basically or maybe you could do it like this canvas and then you could plan different things you could have a main menu panel in it and you know you can plan your user interface okay so this was approach number one let's go to approach number two present let's see okay so uh, if the approach number two is by game design uh, if you haven't read uh, uh, about game design approaches and frameworks I recommend uh, you read uh, the MDA framework I have provided a link in the description so basically there are three main things mechanics dynamics aesthetics mechanics are basically the things uh, you basically let's say if it's a twin stick shooter um, being able to click and shooting uh, a bullet at that point would be a mechanic being able to use your keys to move your guy around would be a mechanic the dynamics would be things like score his health and, and stuff like that so i will go through it and let's uh, go and exit the presentation let's go and go back to coggle create a new diagram and this time we are going to plan the same project but in a game design approach so let's say it's a top-down shooter GDD game design and this time we're gonna have mechanics here so then we are gonna say hmm click to shoot at that point another thing use arrow keys to move the guy let's say out oh, this and another we don't have grenades or something but let's say right click to reload gun okay then we can say dynamics okay these can also be considered as tasks you need to do in your game 
so these would also help you you could you know one by one uh, you know finish them and put ticks and if you want to know how did that how did that just put a colon and you're gonna get these uh, icons so you could do use this tool as a task tool as well but I recommend using hack and plan for that but I'll get to that okay so dynamics let's say we're gonna have soldiers health and then we're gonna have ammo count then what else hmm. we could have kill count we could also have enemy waves uh, let's uh, no enemy waves okay so these are the dynamics of the overall gameplay systems our game is going to have and other another thing I often uh, do in this approach is let's suppose our soldier had attributes and those were I accidentally clicked okay those were intelligence and dexterity and let's say hmm, physical fitness and now I wanted the you know the for example the run speed of our soldier to depend on his physical fitness okay so what I often do is instead of you know piling them around here I what I often do is I make a one called composite values and uh, I misspelled it and what I do then is I put all those values which are to be calculated from some other values here for example let's say maximum stamina let's put maximum health also depends on our uh, physical fitness run speed could depend on dexterity maximum stamina then we could have say experience gain could depend on intelligence and all these things basically are coming from these attributes and then we could use those here so I wouldn't put run speed here I would you know remember to use composite values when I'm making my mechanics so let's say if I use arrow keys to move the guy I know to use the run speed which has been calculated using the physical fitness of that guy so uh, how do I how would I go about it I would probably make a uh, soldier stats data class or something which would have attributes and uh, composite values would come be coming out from attributes so soldier stats would be a data class and but it would probably be inside a soldier stats manager or uh, if our soldier if we only have one soldier instead of a hundred soldiers running around each with their own statistics then we could have a manager uh, uh, object with soldier stats in it so uh, if, uh, if you notice I am uh, once now imagine after having done that I'm making my game what I would do is I would start working on the mechanics then I would start working on the dynamics there's another thing I showed you in the presentation which is called aesthetics if you read the MDA framework paper you would know that basically aesthetic is the most important thing it's basically how uh, what kind of emotional response you're planning for uh, your game around what your game makes your uh, player feel so aesthetic uh, for example there are certain kind of aesthetics mm, this is the of original paper uh, on MDA framework so these are mm, the eight main aesthetics so let's suppose you're making your game around uh, how would I mm, let's say you're making your game around sensation or sense pleasure then I would say okay aesthetic I might have misspelled it but okay aesthetic or let's say we are 
aiming for sense pleasure and also competition okay so by doing this I would it would help me uh, imagine how I can improve my game so if I'm for sense pleasure I would say okay then I am probably going to need uh, really good uh, shooting uh, particle effects decals blood effects and things like that and this would feed more into my you know dynamics so I, I could say particle systems particle systems for guns and then I could imagine more things for it smoke from barrel then I could say oh I'm gonna have empty shells falling from the gun as well things like that so basically you know I could then start tagging certain things which actually feed into that particular aesthetic it would also help me uh, you know improve my game a lot okay I'm having trouble arranging the things but no my okay so then competition I could plan to have um, multiplayer uh, system in this game so basically it would help boost the competition aesthetic of my game so where there could be other soldiers helping you or competing with you and things like that so this diagram will continually evolve as you work on your game and uh, then uh, pretty soon uh, this uh, diagram by the end of your game would be a visual representation of this uh, I would like to say the soul of your game and it would also help you f actually finish your game which is very important okay so I'm cl close to ending my video for further recommendations I would recommend uh, using hack and plan uh, for uh, the nitty gritties and the actual task uh, management for your game it's like Trello for uh, game developers and it's really nice I've been using it for uh, since it was in beta then another thing is uh, unity collaborate most people often uh, forget or do not want to use git especially hobbyists and single man teams so for them I would recommend use unity collaborate and keep backing up your project so every time you make a new uh, significant uh, significant improvement in your game or let's say you finished this right click uh, thing and uh, you you know put a check mark here and you know use hack and plan and or and do you know track that task as done and then upload your project to unity collaborate as a backup okay and i hope uh, you liked uh, this uh, present uh, video i would say and this was my first video and if you want me to make more videos about actually coding in in a proper and organized way and in object oriented way in unity because mostly people don't and they end up with spaghetti uh, code and haphazard unity projects i could do that but depends on the response i get from this video and thank you take care